Okay, so that's it. Then agile metrics that matter. And I was particularly interested with the, the whole point of that matter. And in order to talk about that, I would like to invite you to consider and even share either on the chat or openly on your mics. Why do you care specifically about metrics? How do you use metrics for? Too early. Okay, so Sonali, is there a hand up there? Is that because you already have an answer? Uh, yeah, so I would to uh, uh, put it in the, to my everyday life, like you mentioned, to your first question was that do you have singing or something of that sort. So let me consider like I want to get into the fitness thing and I start with a basic thing. Let's say I have to do high, high rise jobs. So first I consider that the basic foundation would be like 15 reps. And then slowly and steadily, when I try to increase them, I see the both my flexibility of my body and how I am improving. And with over time, and I increase those 15 reps into 20 reps or 30 reps. So that is where, um, that is where I can correlate with my everyday life. Okay. And you got it. And in I see here on the chat too. Absolutely that. So you find ways of understanding where you are at and where you want to be. And metrics are really, any talk about metrics, really talked about improvement. That is really what is at stake here. And uh, yeah, absolutely, Brian. Yeah, so the, the chat usually has a life on its own. So yeah, how do you know where you have been if you don't know where you are at here? Metrics, <laughs> yeah, metrics via Alice in Wonderland. Absolutely that. So we are definitely all aligned it is talking about metrics, it's about improvement. So that already puts us in a much better place than for many people. Now, still, what are metrics really? And I'm inviting you to talk to an old guy, you know, from psychology, but he was a smart one. And basically, metrics are questions. Now, they are not simply any questions. And metrics are also not the same as measures. And we talk about them a little bit, you know, we, we exchange a little bit and use one for the other. But it is an important distinction. And it's really nice because Sanali gave us an, an example earlier. Um, so the metrics are the questions worth answering. So you can ask a lot of questions. Not all of them are that important. Now, measures also are some questions, but they are the, the stuff that you do to get an answer that most important one. So if I just ask about my weight, well, you know, I'm actually trying to gain weight because I'm doing, you know, a bunch, I'm, I'm pulling weight, I'm, you know, doing pumping iron, I'm going to go like getting really, really fit. And a good thing is actually gaining weight, but it can also gain weight just by eating a lot. So that is not the type of question that alone on its own give me something. But when I ask about, am I getting healthier? I go in and look for a palette of things that would help me answer that. So that's also another interesting thing about metrics. They usually aren't answered with one simple way. You actually go answering them about, you know, you have several ways to go answering them. And what makes the metrics that really matter matter are these two things. They will invite you to take some sort of action. Do more of this. Do less of that. It is really that simple. And the measures that you collect to help answer that metric, also they are in alignment with that thing that you want to improve. So that is really important because just finding something because it's easy to measure doesn't mean that we are on the right track. So it's gonna be a little bit clearer once we go through example. Now, what does Agile have to do with all of this? Somehow it feels like it's so hard to measure things in, in Agile and uh, you know all those things that you learn in project management school, do you throw them all away? And, you know, there are all these new ways that you have burned down CFD, uh, you know, we could do a quiz here and put on the chat all the things that you can remember, all the little names and little measures that you find. And it feels like Agile has its own lingo to, uh, to the approach of metrics. So I personally don't buy into that 
And the way I see agile metrics that matter is just like any other metrics, they are actionable. They are aligned with the desired improvement that I want to achieve. And in particular, all of these things, they help us to become more adaptive, become more quick to pivot. So the the things I will discover will allow me to investigate, do I need to change something? Do I continue to do what I'm doing? And they will eventually create a better business and not simply reflect what my business is. And maybe and possibly the business piece of it is also something that is not being measured yet in your enterprise. I don't know. We'll see. So metrics also have an anti-pattern and we will talk about the happy stuff and the interesting stuff in, in a few seconds but I just want to lead us you know let's talk about the bad stuff first and then we are we are left with only with uh, what is actually good about metrics so one of the things that can happen with metrics and we should really pay attention to so if we think questions worth answering Usually we won't incur into this anti-pattern, but when we don't consider a question that is really relevant, we just go with the first question that seems to make sense, we can weaponize it. And some examples could be, what could be an example of weaponizing metrics? What could you do with those metrics and measures in a company that is so unhelpful? Overusing it, so having too many metrics. Ooh, that is a good one. That is a, a very, very good one. And actually, that brings us here. I call this hoarding. Thank you for that. That I call it hoarding. And while it doesn't look like that in certain dashboards, it definitely looks hard to decipher. You, you, you see so many things and more than 10 different things to look at. At some point, you just don't know what to do. You, you're actually paralyzed because if you move this one thing, you have to compare it with nine others. It doesn't really tell you much, but it gives the feeling that we could potentially improve. After all, we are measuring so much. But an example of weaponizing, I think we can, we can relate to that one, which is comparing. Team A is delivering more than team B in whatever measure that is, or, um, you know, do we really need to compare teams and people? Um, is it really when we want to improve, do we want to improve in relation to one another or do we want to improve with relation to oneself? And that is really, really key, at least in the realm of agile metrics. I've seen that one a lot that is very disturbing for all levels of teams, including leadership teams. And then this one, have you seen? This one around, measures that makes us look good. Can you name one? Padding. Ah, oh. <laughs> absolutely. And, and the thing is, um, even if you go completely, I think everybody can understand that one. Like go on social media, yeah, in, Instagram, those things. Like a, a lot of people, I actually know someone who was, uh, you know, she's super happy and she's wondering what she's going to do with the 200 something thousand people that follow her on the fitness world. She doesn't monetize any of that. She has 200,000 fans. It looks really good, but no money comes in from that, which is great if you just want to have a bunch of friends. But it's one example of, wow, the numbers suggest something that doesn't really reflect something else. So it's something to be very attentive because between weaponizing, making us look good, or just confusing the heck out of us, what can happen is always a response. And in the first two cases, just be aware, if you compare people, or if you just try to look good, what will people do? They will respond by gaming the system. All the other team delivers 60, story points and I'm delivering only 40 from now on my most basic story will be eight points and now I'm delivering a hundred it is fixed so I just fixed something that needed no fixing in the first place and you know when is it going to really stop and the hoarding problem is very simple is I'll, I'll get paralyzed it's too much information I'll, I'll trust that someone else will look at that data later so it's really, really important that we consider 
that the, you know, why are these things anti-patterns? Because they don't really reveal anything. And it's so good, you know, have that feeling that you are doing something, you are measuring something because you're collecting these data. But it really isn't true. So we need to pay attention that it's not because something is easy to collect, that it's useful. And it's not because something is hard to collect and measure that actually we shouldn't be doing that. So we really need to know how to ask better questions, better metrics, metrics that are actionable, metrics that are worth something are a question that is really valuable for us. And then we figure out interesting ways for us to answer today. And these ways of answering those questions will change tomorrow. So how are we doing so far? Any questions? Silence means no, we'll keep moving. And then let's start with the good stuff. So agile metrics that matter. Okay, the recipe is that there is no recipe. I don't think there is any recipe, but I do think that are ingredients. So what we're going to be talking about now, it's a bunch of ingredients. And if you are feeling you know, into it, maybe later, we're gonna cook with some of these ingredients and see what comes up in our conversation. So the first piece that I want to bring into the, the conversation is to think of your metrics in terms of categories. So you don't need to take those that I'm offering. There's a lot of smart people in this realm that can offer you fantastic ones. But whenever you're going to choose measures to answer something for your question worth being answered, think about something like work and quality. You know, that kind of stuff. Release, the stories I, I make, how long it takes. Customer and business. Product people love those. Not sure if they share with you, but those are important ones as well. And surprise, surprise, people and collaboration. So Agile is about people and interactions. And I wonder how many of you know of metrics of your team or even your whole department, they really consider the aspect, the human aspects of the work. Do you have any sort of like a, I call them a, a happiness index? Do you, do you check anything like that for your teams? Ooh, I wonder with the silence. So you are not alone. You are not alone. Every time I come into a new client, uh, one of the things that I observe is that everybody is quick to say how many stories are uh, in progress and how many they finished. And sometimes they don't know how to answer things like that. And I always like to revert to the basics of Agile and our principles. So if I'm not delivering any sort of value, I'm not hitting any marks in here. If I am not delivering frequently and with quality, I'm not hitting any marks in here. But I also need to remember people engaged, motivated individuals, sustainable pace. So I think when you remind when you remind yourself of those basic elements of agile in general, you're off to a good start. So whatever categories you want to create, just remember you want categories, you want to calibrate because I could deliver the best product ever that nobody uses or the best product ever that everybody uses and the team is completely tired and you know they can't keep up that pace so these things they all go together so that's that's one piece you know one ingredient that i would really um consider when i'm thinking about what are the questions i want answers for the metrics that i want so i will be then offering insights in these categories in here and you let me know what is it that you think about them. So work and quality. How good is our stuff? How efficient is our stuff? That kind of thing. So what do you measure here, folks? What are some examples? I think for quality, people speak about the defects, right? The defect ratio. Defect. Mm, I'm hearing keywords. Loving it, of course. Anything else? Any favorites? So the ones I have in here, they touch many, many things. So and either with a show of hands or maybe on the chat, like, do you do you know anything 
related to your releases if you're in the world of software? And I ask this because I haven't seen that many, many people who actually look at this stuff. But it, it's probably with DevOps and DevSecOps and those guys. Now I think we're going to be on the right track. But this is something that I noticed that is very interesting. So consider looking at your releases. If I deliver frequently, early and often, so I should know what that means for um, for our team and even for our own department. Look at your whole pipeline. But understand, you know, how often is too often? Success rate is every time that you deliver something, you release something. Is it a pain? <laughs> it shouldn't. And if it is, you know, you need to do something with it. Does it take a whole day? Does it take, is a click of a button? Defects coming to that, you know, and uh, yeah, absolutely consider that. So I see here in Jira saying lead time, great metric. Absolutely. It's one, I actually say this one doubles down and, and but definitely can come in here. And uh, so whatever you consider in here could work to in the workload space. And I think those are the ones we know more. All very good ones. And they go by the names that, that we, you know, names that we use, uh, like whip limits and psycho time. And that's great. But just for this slide here for a little while, just for the sake of demystifying, I'm just using a little bit of, you know, plain English for us to just understand that in the end, it's not the tool. And if I don't have that plugin in Jira, I can still do what I need to do because it's about how much work is in the process versus done and ratios. And I had heard ratios before. Ratios are really, really good because they tell us proportion of things. The speed of completion, you can give it a name, but it basically is how fast can I complete work? Is it different when it's from this part of the process or that part of the process? Where is it slow? When it's slow, can I make it go faster? What is that in a constraint that I have? Projecting finish line. I could call it forecast, but I think when you project a finish line, it's kind of like easier to understand. So a lot of these things here, I know, you know, great, but I would consider, I haven't seen much of those here, releases, deliverables, and doubling down on quality. And is anybody here today from the realm of support, operations, production, customer service, Yeah. Oh, I like this, Sonali. Yeah, yeah. Infrastructure velocity, how quickly you can cater to your stakeholders. Yeah, absolutely. That is a good one. That is a good one. And for the folks in support, they actually measure a lot of things. And when you look at them, do you think this has anything to do with Agile? How many tickets open versus closed? Am I hitting the uh, the SLAs? Most support systems and, and teams and people, they have SLAs to hit and we can call it agile or not. But if agile is being customer centric, I see no problem in looking to my SLAs and see, are we hitting 80%, 50%? How long does it take for us to talk to our customer from the first time that they take the phone? They spend five minutes listening to that music that no one, nobody wants to listen to. So it is really important to notice that if I am measuring what matters, if I am asking a question worth answering that tells me anything about the quality of our work, the ability to meet in the, the, the needs and even the light our customers, many times it is more related to our business than it is to any of the you know fancy agile names. And that is not to say that there are good tools for measuring. But if you know these things, understanding your business, understanding the pipeline that you have for your work and for quality, you are golden. And of course, you're not going to use all of them, but you're going to pick what makes sense for you. So here are a few examples. And, uh, and not all of these are good. Not all of these are good. And I'm going to actually reveal them here. And uh, do, you, do you disagree? Are you upset that I cut the ones in red? I guess that's a no. And the one that I cut in red, they are just misplaced. So velocity, the idea behind velocity and the speed of things, it's always great. The story point piece, not so much. 
but it could be ideal days too. If it was ideal days in velocity, it would also not work because you don't care about measuring guesses. Estimations are guesses and they have a place to be used. And it's not here in the world of metrics. You don't take metrics out of your bet. You take metrics out of data, ideally something that is leading or something that already happened. So that's why I wouldn't consider anything with story points to live in the world of agile metrics because completing something is a little bit more binary than that. So if you have work to do, burn downs are great for that because is that thing done or not done? So they always have the kind of like staircase look, but that is okay. That is, that, that's normal. It's just the nature of a burn down. But if I have three points done out of my five, I don't know if I'm close to the end or not. Like that's why the hours really don't matter much either. Count of things, how many things done, not done in progress waiting. That is more telling. Is that something that makes you uncomfortable or you feel good with that? You really, really sold in using story points and other things. Actually, the count is a good thing because uh, it leaves a lot of questions away, right? Otherwise, if you go to velocity or something, people may not know what is the complexity. Then you have to explain this is all. But when you go with throughput, straightforward and simple. You got it. Yeah. And we have it on the on the chat as well. Throughput. Absolutely. So the rate at which things flow um, in, in, in our pipeline of work, that is relevant because that is very critical. That thing that usually is a is a is a post-it. Oh, it can't appear here. Okay, post-it. So it usually is a representative of a specific request or something that has a very clear element of value in it. So it, it either is done or not. And when it's done, you can really check a box. Now, these are probably the ones that we are most used to, but there are others that are super useful and they, they usually tend to be more complex, but I would love for you to just keep your, your mind a little bit more open to them because, um, you know, they sometimes tell us different pieces of the story. So I am very, very big on control charts. And this comes from, from statistics. And basically what it tells you is super simple, but is very powerful. It tells you here is an, an average line. And you have that after measuring, let's say, how long it takes for things to get complete anyway. And then you have that kind of average and you observe your average. And then you see what's happening in reality. And the closer you are to that line, you're basically understanding, wow, we are super stable. Whatever we create seems to make sense. We really understand our process. Our requests are very aligned with our ability to cater to them. When our curve is all over the map, we start seeing what? There's a lot of variability. That is not in itself a bad thing, but it just tells us, wow, it is harder in the first case, it's it's easier to understand how to fulfill requests. And in this case here, we kind of know, well, it's it's never so easy. But then there's also another thing that you consider in this space, which is here is my acceptable level of variability. And that is also good. And while you are in those guardrails, you start gaining stability. And then you start understanding how to format the request that you team, be it a software team, uh, a marketing team, um, whatever you are asked to produce, you really understand how to create them. Now, this is on the more complex side, but there are things that are really simple. So we are looking at something here that it's called percentiles. Have you ever used anything related to percentiles? No? And math is really your friend once you start thinking about um, a, a few more interesting and powerful metrics, measures for your metrics. Because what percentiles will tell you is that you have a sweet spot for things but you also understand the variation in your process. So let's try and make this a little bit more concrete. You know that in here, let's say, it takes you an average of 14 to 16 days to get your, I don't know, your, your tickets. It could be a user story. It could be your support ticket. They take an average here, 14 to 16 days. You know in the worst case scenario, though, let's say, in here that it could take 
up to to 50 days. Now, you can then use that information to give answers to your stakeholders. And someone was saying, you know, I, I use measures here to talk to stakeholders. Absolutely. If you have a stakeholder that can take a lot of risk, they say, I need this done. Uh, can you hit this date? We can, you know, we're we are okay if we miss the mark a little bit. You can talk about these days here. Okay, I think we can plan this for it being done. It's done in two weeks. 16 days, it's in the bag. When you're talking to the stakeholders that are more on the cautious side, you're going to tell you, well, this is a little bit of a risk, but we can do, but I can guarantee you that in 50 days, we are done. And then you let them decide. So there are some elements like this, you know, it's a, it's probably not something we are so used to at first, but it's worth taking a look, understanding the math a little bit behind. But hey, That is just one piece, the math that you use behind. But honestly and always, the best really is the starting with the question that you want an answer for, and that better be a good question. So customer and business, are you in touch with a lot of customer and business metrics in your organization? I am not surprised by the crickets. That is something I also see a lot. And I'm currently working with a government agency. And it's very interesting. Let me know if you've seen this scenario. IT needs to deliver things. And they need to deliver it very fast. And we have all sorts of metrics to know, are we delivering fast? Are we delivering better? Are we being good enough? And when you ask on the business side, we actually have things that are sitting They are sitting in production, waiting to be toggled on. Nobody even gave that to the customer yet. And nobody is being held responsible. Money has been invested. In this case, taxpayers' money has been invested. And we don't even know if the thing works. But we know that the team, the last release, they were until 2 a.m. making sure that that release was a good one. So we are not looking to blame here, but you're going to (laughs) see, right, Kelly? That happens a lot. Yeah, yeah. So you see that the point here isn't blaming, but we are very quick to develop the, the measures that will answer questions on the IT production and delivery side. And we are not getting our business people, product people, salespeople to get used to coming to the table and answering the question with us. Or when they have those things, it's not shared with us. And that is also another problem. So that level of transparency really needs to exist. So it's actually interesting because on the customer side, it is kind of easier to measure. So it's always surprising that they are not being either measured or shared with development teams. And here are just a few examples. So customer and market, definitely something that we are used to hearing about. I don't remember seeing any in this um, government agency yet, but it is, you know, like, is it available to my customer, but the customer hasn't started to use yet. I would measure that stuff right now because I bet that this was a feature. It was going to be a success. And wow, it's been two weeks. Nobody clicks that thing. Nobody cares. It's very important. Time to gather feedback. And this can be something that you even can embed in your code. You are delivering code. Do you have, there are many, many legal ways, many compliant ways, GDPR compliant even, to make sure that you understand the behavior of your customer in your application. So this is metric in real time that you could be already inputting even into your system as you do this. But of course, you have more traditional ones like, yeah, is my customer satisfied? Do a survey, talk to them. And these are hard ones to get, eh? I don't remember seeing those money-related ones. And value for the customer is many things. Value for the organization is a very clear one. It's money, because if it's not, it's a hobby. It's not a business. So it's actually that simple. So Getting exposed to those metrics uh, and and what are the measures that accompany them. So here are some. Money, measure in and out. Because I just got a million dollars in revenue. Is this good or bad? It is probably very bad if I spent a million dollars and one cent 
I just didn't even make a profit. So you don't measure just what comes in and what seems to be the value generation. You will associate those things with cost as well. It's great to have clients coming in and they and they are all downloading our features. Nice. Everybody seems to have downloaded the latest app. Are they using it though? So it's really looking into, especially in the realm of customer and business, making sure that we are not going to the vanity metric side of things. Customer lifetime is a very important one. So in my business, most of my students, 78% of my learners come back to a second course or coaching with me. So instead of just, hey, come have a course with me, and then I forget about you and I run after someone else. I give you great customer service so that you want to stay in a relationship with me. How many companies can say that, that once you pay for the first game that you download after that, you you can't really have a relationship with them and talk about new features with them. So customer and business, like it's really serious stuff that I'm really, really wondering, you know, what is your experience out there with them, with those? Yes, absolutely, Kelly. Analytics, those things can be embedded in the world of technology. Many of these actually can and should be part of the work that we do as we implement software. So that is actually good news. Really, really good news. And here are just some examples, just we've seen the visual. So good old uh, um, uh, net promoter score. That is a very famous one now. Everybody wants to have that. And but if you have good old, you know, referral website, how many stars do you give me? That is already something that you can use. And then, you know, are we are we if you have some sort of a warehouse or by any chance you're fulfilling, you have fulfilling systems, you have equipment, you have things that you deliver, you know, what is your rate of delivery? Ooh, here we were suffering. But other than that, wow, we fulfill really good. So you basically have you know, being in touch with any of some of these things and some others probably, I'm pretty sure you don't see these, but they could. And when I say they could, I'm no, I'm not inventing because uh, booking.com is very famous for that. Everybody in the organization, they, they have thresholds. They have a dashboard with the thresholds where they know how much money they can lose and how many customers they can disrupt with, um, whenever they put something in production. So right now you have an idea, you have total freedom and control to put that feature live and observe the dashboard. And as soon as you see that you're getting close to the the threshold and the the alarms go on, you roll back your feature. You say, well, I'm allowed to, to make a few mistakes here. And it looks like this feature was not a good one. We learned that we won't be rolling out anything related to it. So we can be done. Now, how many places do that? So that's really something to consider, especially if you are here in in show of hands, if you're if you're one of those, you're project manager, agile coach, scrum master. If you're in some sort of layer of influence, product owner in your organization, you can definitely start advocating for those. So I really, really do recommend that you bring business to the to the table, to the discussion, whenever we are talking about measuring what matters. And then we have people. Yeah, yeah, customer lifetime. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm I'm acknowledging you folks here in the chat. And it really is um, analytics can be, you know, can be, can have a life on its own. But in the end, it all starts with, are we asking the right question? So even for people in collaboration, and you can apply here, some things like a more at the organizational level, like the Gallup is a great test and you have Glassdoor and you even have NPS score for employees now. But you can look for simple things like a happiness index. Uh, and I call it this way, but it's really, what if you just have like every week, you ask your people, there's like a three little, I'm going to show you an example that I have with the team, which is how are you feeling today? And today is mm, tomorrow. Is like, you know, you, you can ask these things and you should be used to ask these things. And if Agile is about collaboration, are you asking about teamwork? Are you asking how people receive and what do they do with the feedback that they receive? Because this is the sort of thing that is part of, uh, you know, how we uh, 
how we really operate a little bit differently. And I think this is the category that could be a little bit more different than your traditional metrics because they don't speak of the work only or the value being delivered. They really talk about the people producing the work and you can get really creative. Most of the things you find in here though will be qualitative and it's just as good. It's a great measure. And it's just don't don't get stuck into things that have very specific numbers. You can have a very good data that is qualitative, that is for sure. Yeah, for the stakeholders, amazing, Kelly. Absolutely. Ask your stakeholders, how happy are you with the latest release? How happy are you with the yeah, with our um with our usual interactions? You absolutely can do that. And we are entering then the realm that is the most important thing. To answer your metrics, all that you do is combining those measures. Usually you won't have one that will answer everything for you. So this is the example that I told you I have with them, with one of the teams that I am uh, supporting right now. And we basically want to understand how well are we delivering our features. This is a team that wants to prove that they can have full autonomy to own a part of the, the product that they are doing. So the first thing that we thought about is on what we can control, how absolutely the awesomest are we. So we look at defects. We look at the time it takes in average to deliver things. We look at the quality of our releases, and this is binary. Release was good. Release has an issue, like any issue. If we had to call someone to join forces and make sure that the releases go through, this is the problem. This goes in the failure, as in not successful. And we do have our happiness index. And basically, we look at this thing, and I it, it's much bigger than this, but I extracted the, the, the last two months for us to see here. And when I look in here, I see that, wow, I'm getting faster. Surprisingly, there are more defects. Is this just a correlation? <laughs> We don't know if it's a causation, but it is correlated. However, how interesting, the releases got better. So we, we now know how to release better. But look at this. We are so unhappy. The past two releases were awesome, but we got better. This, something here happened that affected us. The fact that on top of that, we are working to deliver faster, 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 and created more defect. Okay. Big theme for a retrospective here. So that is really the best way to use, in my opinion, your measures. You have to have that important question. And ideally, go a few retrospectives with the same question. Really beat that horse to death. I hate that expression, but it's, it, you know, it's used here. But take that question and really massage it and look at it in several different angles time and time again. Because... You, you need to see those things put into perspective. You know, it's not one piece only. It looks great, right? It was bad, bad releases, now good releases. Ooh, we are getting faster, but it's really not that simple. So we want to have a holistic view here. I'm not sure, Wesley, the hands up is so that you can come in and, and speak. Yes, I have a question regarding your, um, your metric. Um, how... Uh, how often is the release? Is it every three months or uh, uh, are they inconsistent from one release to another release? Um, and then do you use all these metrics in every retrospective meeting? Because um, I tend to use all the metrics every single month because we use two, sp uh, two week sprints. And then I, uh, I tend to show them everything when I've happened why it happened, and then what we can do to improve it. And so, so uh, from okay. spring to spring. So I know you, you're doing it from release to release. How often is that? Yeah, those are the, the releases in this team. It's not Google. We're not releasing every day. You know, that's, that's not that beautiful uh, continuous deployment. Uh, it is continuous deployment, but it's not continuous delivery. So it doesn't get really towards the customer. Um, th those are monthly releases. And uh, we can call releases when we have hot fixes. We can also like call them as needed, but usually have major releases. Th those are the major releases here. And they are structured, you know, every month. It's towards the end of the month. The date is never fixed, but we know it's the last week of every month. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and then uh, this is mostly automated. So here, there was a lot of, uh, even before, the, the, what motivated it all was really a sequence of bad releases. Like there's, there's more orange that you can see here. And then we started thinking, okay, how well are we delivering? And from the discussion, we figure out that those were things we could be looking at. And it's been now four months. So for the, the past four retrospectives, that's something that we've been using. And you should be prepared to, you know, this can be something that you won't be answering quickly. It's it's sometimes a, it's sometimes a little bit anxiety uh, provoking because those things don't just get fixed like that. You really have to understand what's going on. You can only see here if you like, hmm, you know, insights and see there's something going on. So we just start getting better at a lot of things and the level of happiness has been diminishing. And even if you look here, it's a trend that is really like it's been a while now. It hasn't been just the last few releases. So we are um, we are looking into that. So um, and and then I, I'm not hopping the meeting. Okay, I'm just kind of trying to understand how different people looking at metrics and what they do to help the team improve it, right? So if you're looking at the trends, the last three releases, okay, you know, us just very not very satisfactory. So how do you improve your team morale? Because there are there are um, um, fatigue, uh, change fatigue, uh, when the team is not really understanding why they're not meeting the goal, and your happiness index um, actually show to them that you know they're not improving, they are actually going down. So what are the preventive measure that you have implemented uh, that allowed the team to um, improve the productivity as well as the team morale. Hmm. Does that it is, very, it does. Before I give an insight, I wonder if someone else wants to share. Has anybody had a similar experience? Yes, go, Abby. Share, share. Um. So I am a software developer, and I go through um this metrics pretty often um on one side it's i am kind of rewarded for putting out more uh more releases but with the more the quicker i work the more defects that i i create because i'm not uh doing thorough testing and there's potential bugs that get overlooked and on the other end if i spend more time on a release then my metric for time spent on a particular task goes up, but, and my quality of work does go up. The amount of bug fixes that I have to do are less, but then I spend so much time on one particular task that it looks like I'm not being as productive as I need to be. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Kelly from Product Perspective, chime in. So for me, I I actually look at it from a perspective of how well am I communicating the requirements to the dev team. And if the feature is not deployed as properly, I actually will blame it on, um, you know, I, I actually put more onus on product because product has a responsibility of going to the stakeholders to identify what the requirements are and making sure that we communicate them in such a fashion that there's no ambiguity with dev when they get those user stories. So I, I don't put as much weight on dev and, um, and, and also before it even gets, when it gets to QA. So it, I make sure that the QA um, team is actually well with testing and that's where we can identify bugs before it actually goes to production to say, Hey, that's, that, that actually wasn't the ask. Cause there are some cases where dev might, make assumptions but again that kind of goes back to how well are we writing user stories in the features thanks for that yeah okay so my piece yeah, but the lens, sorry just to add uh, yeah. from the product point of view as well see uh, we have value but what is missing is a validation of that value right what we think we think it is value but is it value to the end customer or not right that close of feedback loop is very much required. So those kind of those kind of things, if they're following back in, it helps us to understand 
whatever assumptions that we made by making the product, how are they like that? Okay, so that can help. I love that. Yeah, it's it's a very important. <clears throat> sorry, it's a very important notion here because we are looking. This is this is the development team, and, and that is what they can control. So also understanding that the time things take is an important notion. It isn't necessarily what drives, right? I, I use that information to know how fast I can give you things or not, but definitely these drive us. So everything gets submitted to those. So I don't cut on time to dissatisfy the others. It's the other way around. So time here is our weakest. We can take longer, but we can't afford displeasing customers. We can't afford having the team spending nights for delivery, and we definitely can't afford a team that will burn eventually. So you will notice in your metrics, whatever they are, in your measures in the metric, whatever they are, that there will be something that calls out more for you. This is very specifically for an agile team. And before I show a few more detailed ones here, I just want to say customer focus we we'll also have other things that you would add. So how good that we have responded to our customer needs. So here is just one example. And usually your business teams will be collecting things like that. Sometimes the, the, the team is the same when you work very well together, but sometimes you will be asking to see those. And sometimes it is really about like everybody together. What could that look like in the spirit of select a few, look at those and you will eventually change what they are. What do I mean by that is this team here, this is how we are now answering the question, how well are we delivering our features? As soon as we get these things under control, and it looks like release will be the easiest thing so far, we'll stop worrying about releases. The data will still be there. We just we won't be looking at that. And we might be looking at other things. We might be looking at our predictability. So over time, we'll be replacing some of these. And instead of just a happiness index, we might actually be looking into, you know, once we discover now we have a retro coming Friday, what is really making us that unhappy? Now we might be measuring that thing here. What is that? It is because the process is cumbersome. It is the, the amount of meetings. And we might actually now start zeroing in and replacing this one with measuring that one. Remember, I want to take action in action aligned with the improvement that I want to make. So those are things that I would, um, you know, I would call out in here for this, this particular piece as well. So I know that we are short on time. Boy, I thought we were going to have more time, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm all here for questions and everything that we want to share. I will leave the slide in here just to share, you know, a few. These are just a few measures that you can use for things like team effectiveness. But remembering that you can get as creative as you want. The one thing you always need to think about is what is the question we really should spend time answering now and not start from CFD, uh, lead time. These things can be used, but is it really what you're looking for right now? No, zero in in the question. And then you go and you collect whatever you think that could help you answer that right now. So I think we have like five minutes and then there'll be some wrapping up. So how do we want to spend that time? More questions, more interaction? Is there any any measure here that you aren't missing? The second one, I feel accountable is interesting one. Right? Yeah. So. <laughs> you know, I think I think you can get really creative with the uh with what you need to measure if you really invested and if your team has buy-in for really improving whatever you want to improve. Um, I want to you know, this is a life coach and people make jokes about life coach all the time, but I just wanted to use because I found it so amazing is that the difference between the, those great teams and the teams who are suffering a lot. Well, some are just asking better questions. So let's start getting those more interesting questions being asked instead of just focusing on here is the number of the moments that everybody else is using. And as you go for it measures, just, you know, I'll leave it here so it's going to appear in the recording and you can then pause and re-digest. But it is the, the easy math of it all. You're looking for trends. You are looking for ratios. You're looking for percentiles. Absolutes 
are usually just a photograph and you want to see behavior over time. That is going to be key for you as far as improvement and as far as noticing really important things.